I've worked for several newspapers in Scotland and I think we can safely say that I'm making history today by being probably the only former executive editor of Her Majesty's Daily Mail <laughs> <laughs> ever to be invited to speak at an event organised by the Social <laughs> Politicised. 
Uh, yeah, we're having an event like this, and, and we've got George going in tomorrow, and I hope something can happen there. But in my opinion, and, and I know you've probably heard it before, but there's a classic opportunity here to to form a new party. Let, let's call it, for instance, the Independent Labour Party, which is, you know, with a nod to Kia Party, one of our own, and also uh, uh, acknowledges the Independence Campaign, which has been so good. I mean, it might be called that. There's never been a bit better opportunity to have a proper radical Labour Party. I make no apologies for saying this, but although I voted yes, I'm, I'm not a Scottish nationalist. I voted this way simply because I thought that by doing so, there was a merest possibility, no, no guarantee, that I might be able to live in a society characterised by a desire to help our alienated and disenfranchised communities. <laughs> and also one built on, on a, a sense of compassion for the poor, free from the kind of judgmental spirit that exists in the unionist parties, which, I mean, we expect it from the Tories, but too often recently the narrative of the Labour Party is to blame the poor somehow for being poor and they'll hold up the examples of people, the feckless, the worthless, who claim benefits or who defraud the system. And I think, well, I'll start worrying about benefit cheats when every one of the FTSC top 100 companies begin to pay all the tax. And I know this might be anathema to, to some people, but, but Scottish independence, exciting though the fight was, will always be a poor second and third to a desire to achieve these goals. If it were to happen in independence, Scotland, fine. But my fight would be for it to happen everywhere, whether it's the UK, Scotland, the UK, the rest of the world. And I think also at some point, we probably need to have a chat again about Clause 4. Any time I bring this up, when I go down to London to speak to the Observer, you know, which is a kind of rock and roll liberal left paper, and you, men you mention Clause 4 and, it, and people sat in the vapours and opening the windows. And, and I remember when, when it was ditched, my, my father, who was a, was a very moderate trade union um, Labour Party member, he said, well, what, what, was, um, what was so radical? and challenging about Clause 4 anyway. In England it was seen as, as something akin to communism and the next, the next stop it was going to be uh, breaking down the barriers. But my father said there was, there was nothing. And, and this, this was a sense that I got in Scotland as well. And it's one of the reasons when first time that I saw a real difference between how people of the left in Scotland thought from quite a lot of people of the left in England and when the, the sentinels of New Labour, such as Smith, people forget, you know, John Smith was quite happy to acquiesce to, to uh, Blair and Mandus and, and Brown's uh, New Labour project. And I think that um, any party that rejects Clause 4 to secure for the workers by hand or by brain the full fruits of their industry doesn't deserve to be called a Labour Party. I'll say this for the SNP though, this week and for the first time in a long time I saw a real radical piece of legislation in the stamp duty for homes and it already has the right screaming. And, and I say to a lot of people on the left of my acquaintance, the affluent left, people who do live, who become very successful, they still have their left-wing tendencies. And I said to them this week, how many of you would willingly pay an extra five or 10,000 pounds in order for uh, people who've never had their own home before, in order for them to get a step on the property ladder? Not, not a single one of them. Why, why, should we, why should we do it? And I said, well, that's what the left is all about. You keep calling yourself people of the left. But again, to go back to the real priorities of a proper left-wing Labour Party, okay, it's fine. 
helping people to get on the property ladder and to make it, to give them a financial hand up. But the, the only people, the only sector in Britain that has really actually won out of enabling more and more people to go onto the property ladder has been the mortgage industry and the insurance industry. These people, when Margaret Thatcher allowed us all to the right to buy our own council homes, it was again it was only going to be one winner. The, the, the financial services industry must have tripled more than that its profits in the, the, in the course of two years by that single piece of legislation, which was all supposed to be about social mobility. And I, I'm, I'm more interested not in allowing people to participate in the private housing sector, but to build enough social housing, quality social housing, and it's within the means of this country, so that people, if they don't want to, if they don't want to go and pay more money into the insurance industry, they can be guaranteed a decent home for life, because shelter is, along with several other things that the Conservative Party tried to ban last week or said it would be banning as a basic human right. And I wonder, I wonder as well, um, and it would be good, to, be good to know if anybody here ever, if anybody here thought that if the Conservative Party conference had happened four weeks ago, if you think there might have been a yes vote, because I, I certainly do. I certainly do. And they knew, they knew what they were going to be saying at this conference. And, and they would wink to poor old Gordon Brown, who's now going around saying terrible things to David Cameron and he'd been conned by them, and you think, well, you've been at Westminster since 1996. <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> so I have to say, at the age of 50, I have come late to revolutionary politics. <laughs> Such are the vested in corporate in interests which are embedded in British society and the way politics are done in Britain that there's something far more radical than parliamentary democracy is required because parliamentary democracy only exists in so far as you know we're happy to accept what we're told by a really tiny elite in Westminster. But then if I said things like that my parents would think my, my dear old dad, God rest him, would think I was a communist. <laughs> and as a good Catholic boy, we can't be having any of that malarkey. <laughs> so in the meantime, I'll settle for the establishment of a true, proper, radical, independent Labour Party. And we'll see how far we get. And I don't see why the process can't start at an event such as today or at George Square. Thank you very much.